Hello and welcome to the FDT TV podcast. I am Mike. Thank you very much for, for tuning in. I am joined every week by the very lovely uh, Ian there. Um, both West Ham and Arsenal fans, uh, respectively. Obviously, you can tell by the uh, the decorations behind us. And not that I'm a West Ham fan, but I do have a bit of a guilty pleasure. But that's, um, that's by the by. Um, Ian, thank you very much for joining us again this week. Uh, how you doing? Yeah, I'm I'm good, thank you. I'm good. We've uh, we robbed our, our London rivals, so all is good. Uh, and some idiot got sparked out, so even better. I did see that. I did see that. That was um, I see his uh, his mates getting a bit of jip from the old West Ham fans. Decided that he wanted to chime in, and wallop, he went down. Do you know what I actually found quite nice about that? If nice is the right word to use, is that cool. you could see that that was tensions were starting to get a little bit higher he'd um had a bit of a pop at the guy that larrett him or or one of his mates and um yeah after he got lumped out on the floor i think the uh, the chelsea fans realized that they were slightly outnumbered um yeah. and nothing else come of it um the i you, you're probably best to know if anything has happened in terms of uh police reports or anything like that or whether it's just uh yeah i was a bit of a dick and I got, yeah, I got what I deserved. Seems to have got a little bit of fame from it in his hospital bed afterwards. Yes. Um, Mum and his girlfriend obviously not very happy with him. But but seemingly, I mean, it was a half twelve kickoff, and and they were there were lots of problems with people getting in. They were there early doors, so they would have been there half eleven, eleven o'clock. They were already all tanked up apparently, and sh- like chanting Chelsea, Chelsea, Chelsea in 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 the lineup to go into the West Ham part of the queuing stadium which they shouldn't have been allowed to do that anyway and then the stew there was a steward standing next to him who just walked off when he got lumped and yeah you're like well london's legacy <laughs> you should have you should have been involved in that before it, it got to that problem yeah. but yeah, it was just bad rap all round but got what he deserved because he's an idiot yes if I'm- <laughs> yeah no, I- about it. it's it, no one I, I don't like to see that side of football it, it it doesn't do anything for me but actually what did you expect to happen mm. so 100 percent. it was either him him getting lumped or um, him lumping someone and yeah. um yeah a funny thing is i remember when i had my first beer so uh wasn't wasn't quite as as rowdy as that but anyway we digress very um very strongly there so this week um, there has been some major talking points that have come out, which uh, we're going to go going to go into in depth uh, very mm-hmm. shortly. But we did have another round of the the Premier League. Um, there were some some good fixtures this weekend, actually. I uh, some good fixtures, some good results, some bad fixtures, and some absolutely shocking results slash um, decisions made by VAR. But very quickly. Um, Ian, um, we've obviously mentioned West Ham very briefly just then. Do you want to just crack on, just giving us a quick recap of the uh, the game? Uh, yeah, so um, lots of goals disallowed. I think there was four goals disallowed in total, uh, if memory serves me correctly. Uh, one VAR decision where Suchek is actually now the uh, Golden Glove um, player of the season as, as in the position of goalkeeper for West Ham. Um, awful, awful refereeing all round um but say uh, uh, Jao Felix looked good um as as I sort of expected him to um I think at some point that Chelsea team is just gonna kick into gear because by by all rights they should have been free it should have been it, the game should have been free nil by half time mm-hmm. uh, there were some offsides given which one I agree with one I don't uh, but he's what it is. Not not the most controversial decisions of of the of the week. Uh, obviously, we scored uh, by it via Emerson, who is useless by all accounts, but <laughs> he's a healthy player. So it was only right that he scored and, and got us a goal back. Um, Suchek then got a, a ninety, I think, ninety fifth minute header ruled off for for offside, where he wasn't offside, um, and. Yeah, it's yeah craziness, and then he he went down and 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 saved the goal um, from 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 Gallagher. So some would moan about that that side of things, but actually, when you think back to the reverse fixture and and 
uh, Edward Mendy absolutely clattering Jared Bowen and getting nothing for it. And the goal ruled out. It, it sort of evens itself up in some respects, but I would have much rather seen an entertaining game with some fair officiating. But mm-hmm. we'll take the point. It's well needed. Um, not that it's necessarily done us any good because Wolves beat Southampton. So mm-hmm. things are roundabouts, but we look like we're sort of trying to go in the right direction. Yeah, that was um, <clears throat> obviously we spoke very briefly on on Saturday as the game was happening. But um, from from a neutral's perspective, it was a highly entertaining game, or certainly a highly entertaining first half. Uh, anyway, the um, the pace in which Chelsea were coming out, and I, I think I actually mentioned this as well that for the first twenty five minutes or so, it just all Chelsea, all Chelsea, and <clears throat> I I. I do agree that the the offside decisions sh- should have stood um, f- when you. Well, mind you, actually saying that from from some of the conversations that we're um, we're about to come on, I wonder if the lines were drawn correctly. So it's um, yeah, it's one of those things. But no, I I think from from the result, I think overall, I think it was a fair result. Um, both teams unlucky not to win it at, at one stage of the game. Very entertaining game. Um, and as I said at the start, West Ham were a bit of a, a guilty pleasure for me anyway. Um, so, yeah, I uh, I did enjoy that. Um, just coming on to the Arsenal fixture, Arsenal versus Brentford at home. Uh, I, I've got to be honest, I, w- I was a little bit... Um, what's the word? I was a little bit dubious about this this particular game because... Brentford have had some some good results this year against like the the bigger teams and um, can cause you an upset. Now, mm-hmm. for for us, I think that certainly the um, the first half it was a very cagey match um, to start off with. I'd say for the first 10, 15 minutes, and then Brentford were just coming at us. Um, and I think teams have started to work out the best way in which to stifle Arsenal. And I've got to say it, as 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 good as Eddie Nketiah has been um, over the last few matches, I think we are missing Jesus badly um, yeah. because he's, he's such an annoyance when it comes to um, his positioning, his off-the-ball runs, etc. I think he can really do some damage. But that being said... There were a couple of times I see Eddie Nketiah effectively screaming for the ball and um, no passes come into him. So I, I get that it's frustrating. But Leandro Trossard come off the bench, um, scored the uh, the opening goal of the match. I was thinking about 68, uh, 64 minutes. And then at um, the 76th minute, or I might have the time drop, but in the 70 minutes, uh, Ivan Tony heads the ball in uh, into an empty net because Aaron Ramsdale um, was coming for the ball at the other side of the goal. Um, from from looking at the score, do you know what? I'll, I'll say that I think it's a fair reflection upon the game. Um, however, again, it's one of these controversial moments that we're going to come on to uh, in a moment. Uh, some of the other standout games from this weekend, uh, Manchester City, oh, well, I don't know why it sounded like I had a stroke when I said that, but Manchester City had um, has, have closed the gap to three points uh, on us. Granted, we still have a game in hand over them, which is due to be played at the end of February, I think it is, against Everton. Uh, and we have got Manchester City to play twice. So one of those is on Wednesday. Um, but yeah, the gap has been close to three points. And if they win against us, then they will go above us on goal difference. Uh, Manchester United are another team who have closed the gap at the top. But again, um, they have two or we have two games in hand over them and Manchester City still have a game in hand over them as well. Um, but that gap is now reduced to five points between Manchester United. Um, just very quickly, looking at Manchester United, or games in hand aside, do you think they can mount a um, a realistic title challenge? Yeah. Uh, I think actually when you, when you look at how they're playing, um, they're probably up there for one of the more entertaining sides. Obviously, they're not necessarily for 90 minutes, but that last 20 minutes uh, that they played at the weekend, they ran away with it. Mm. Uh, the the Weghorst signing was an interesting one. Uh, it gives them a different dynamic, and his pressing stats at Burnley were phenomenal. But he's not, he's not 
quite clicking with with Manchester United. He did, he did a few good things and won the ball back a few times. But yeah, it's just not quite clicking. Then he came off for Garnacho and uh, I think Sancho come off for somebody else. I can't remember who it was. And all of a sudden they clicked into another gear and away they went. Um, but that's that squad depth for you, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, they're not they're not far behind. I don't think. If if I'm correct in in my thinking, um, and yeah, I, I don't see why they they couldn't mount a decent challenge. Okay, yeah. I mean, to be honest, I, I did completely agree. I mean, a couple of games ago, um, it was uh, I think it was just before we played them. They um, the all the Manchester United fans were getting on their high horses, and uh, I, to be honest, I think realistically so because they were on a bit of a run. Uh, I am glad that we managed to come away with those three points in a in a pretty convincing win against Manchester United. But um, yeah, they Marcus Rashford I think has been absolutely outstanding, especially since coming back from the World Cup. He's um, banging in the goals for fun at the moment, and it's it is good to see. I suppose from an England perspective, not so much from a club perspective of of opposition uh, or rival mm-hmm. clubs. Um, but certainly for Manchester United, he's um, he's kind of picking up the slack from where goals are lacking in other areas. As you said, obviously, uh, of course, he's um, was yeah was an interesting signing for me. I was a bit confused by that signing, but I suppose with the market in its current state, obviously we, we've seen some ridiculous transfer fees uh, for other players, and obviously if he's all that's available, that's got that bit of quality about him. Um, obviously, I, I suppose that's the only deal that you can do. But I mean, he may improve um, over over the coming weeks, and you never know; might end up being the one that scores the goal to to make Manchester United lift the trophy. But we'll see over over the coming weeks. Um, Lesser City took on uh, Tottenham Hotspurs in a four one win. Uh, Chelsea, uh, Chelsea. Um, Spurs went one 0 up, and then capitulated very quickly and very dramatically. Um, Leicester absolutely dominated that game, and I've got to be honest, it was nice to see after the uh, after the result that we had them getting absolutely pounded. So um, I was very happy with that result. Obviously, being an Arsenal fan, but um, obviously Spurs have been very hit and miss. I mean, uh, yeah, they've been inconsistent. I would say since the start of the season, um, given the how far off. They are as it stands at the moment. Um, are supposed to be the, the the only club that could mount a title challenge against Manchester City at the end of the uh, the transfer or the summer transfer window. Um, Conte, I believe, has um, postponed signing a new contract. Do yep. you think him being pushed out the door before the end of the season if things don't improve, or do you think just let yeah. the contract run down? So obviously he was in hospital for an operation of some sort, wasn't he, over the last couple of games, and they looked like a different team. Um, he was back in the dugout at the weekend, and again they capitulated. Um, I don't think he gets on with the board. I think he's very much. Um, how how do I wear this? He is probably one of the better managers, I think, providing he's given what he wants. A bit like Mourinho, you give him what he wants, you're gonna get results. Daniel Levy's come out a couple of weeks ago and said, well, we made some mistakes in the transfer window. It didn't quite plan out how we wanted it. Da, 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 da. The same old bollocks that I'm sure um, Spurs fans are used to. Um, that mixed with some real key players being out injured. Um, Hugo Lloris, their captain. All right, he's been going for a bit of a torrid time, but he's out till sort of April. Um, Yves Basuma, uh, defensive midfielder, he's out. Christian Romero was suspended. Uh, Ryan Sessegnon's now injured. And Ben Secor came off as well at the weekend, who's just come back from an injury. So some big key players to how he wants to play are out injured. And that, that's going to take its toll on any team. You, you take some of the key players out of any team, they're going to struggle. Um, but yeah, I, I couldn't see him leaving before the end of the season. I think if, if the Spurs fans turn a little bit, the pressure's on. He's going to go. Do you know what? I I don't need this. Um, bit like a couple of number of other managers have have done in their time. What's what? I don't I don't need this problem. Hmm. Um, and again, I'm going to draw back to it. I think the biggest mistake they ever made was getting rid of Mourinho before that final. Mm-hmm. 
I should have let him see out the season then gone, do you know what? Off off you go. Yeah, yeah. But they're gonna go a long, long time without any any uh any trophies, I think. I, it's really weird as well because obviously that some of the signings that they made uh, during the the summer transfer window, I, I will be uh, I will be honest and say that I was probably a little bit jealous of, of some of those signings because they seem to be recruiting really well, mm. um, and I suppose Spurs fans could be forgiven for thinking that they could have um, given who. Who, who could have gone on a title run without a shadow of a doubt? Um, I think one of the issues that we've seen certainly over that over the past and, and certainly in recent seasons is that you can make X amount of transfers within a transfer a market. They could all be quality players, but I suppose with quality becomes ego. And um, if you if you can't get the team to gel you're fucked basically because <laughs> you can, you can give them all of the instructions under the sun. Um, if you've got a squad of players that don't want to play together or can't play together, you're really going to struggle. So um, I think for, for me, <clears throat> certainly obviously, as you said, with the I- I- injuries as well, that's definitely going to play its part. But for me, there there's just seems to be no cohesion between the Tottenham team. I mean, you've got Harry Kane and Son. Son's struggling a, a lot this season. Um, yep. When you think about where he's come from in terms of the last prim- last few Premier League seasons, been absolutely phenomenal, and just seems to be a bit of a, a shadow of himself at the moment. Um, but obviously, we mentioned Harry Kane last weekend, um, record breaker for for Tottenham Hotspur, and um, he seems to be the only only consistent thing about Tottenham as it stands at the moment. So. Ah oh dear, yeah. That's that's the recap for this uh, this weekend. Now, this is the bit I've wanted to come on to, and for this particular section, I think we need to uh, reintroduce uh, one of our our favourite jingles. I certainly know it was one of yours from a few seasons ago. So, um, if you are wearing headphones, please remove these very slightly now. Bloody fast, bloody fucking bastard! Ah. There we go. It's a yes. solid nine and a half. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, so <laughs> yes, the um, bar, VAR, VAR, bloody VAR has been the bane in our life over the last few seasons. And um, I was actually having a discussion with someone earlier and um, I thought it'd be a good point to raise. Now, I think it was yourself that said it over a couple of years ago. Um, when VAR was first introduced. VAR, so season one, you're going to get issues. Season two, you would like to think those issues are ironed out. Not completely. There's still going to be some issues or some uh, inconsistencies. By season three, everything should be ironed out and it should be working. Season four, if you have any issues, it's unforgivable. We are in yep. the fourth season, I believe, now of VAR being in the Premier League. Am I correct? I think so. Okay. So, um, you were you would assume that all of these issues, errors have been ironed out. There shouldn't be any inconsistencies. There shouldn't be any errors. Um, but yep. we have seen four this weekend mm-hmm. in one round of fixtures. Four. That doesn't take into account six of um the six errors that have been reviewed by the pgmol uh, and have said yes there there were six confirmed errors um which related to either goals not being scored or goals being scored etc um <clears throat> that's not good so that's I think sorry. that's if i'm honest I, I think that's four major errors that are clear and obvious to people who don't watch football that's not taking into account the ones that they that are contentious decisions rather mm-hmm. than right is it wrong there's a lot of talking points ar- around some of them yep i mean like the, the the chelsea offsides i would say one of them was wrong one of them was right but actually it's not really saying it was talked about because it was very minimal across the whole game and that the other situations that were about so Yes, yeah, I, think I completely agree. Um, and I think this is one of the things that fans, um, I would say, are really struggling with, is that the... And there's there's a quote that I've got here, which I'll come back to in a minute. Um, 
But because these decisions are so subjective and interpretations of the law, mm-hmm. now for, for me, if you've got a rule or a law, there's there should be no interpretation. It either is or it isn't. Um, yep. And I think some of these um, some of these rules and regulations within um, uh, the, the the rule book. I think are too ambiguous that it does open it up to interpretation or to be flexible with the um the the outcome and um so the first one I want to uh to come on to um is obviously you mentioned it right at the very start um Thomas Suchek um with his diving save yep <clears throat> now it was a great save 100% um super save um and he's as you said a golden glove winner for um the the only goalkeeper i think in the whole season that will uh, will keep a clean sheet throughout the entirety of the season so yeah um yes i was listening to to ref watch today because i was very keen to to hear what was going to be said about all these separate incidents now for this one Dermot Gallagher who which you know i am a massive fan of um come out and said um, that the the VAR official was focused on the law, and this is what I was saying about the interpretation. So apparently, in the rules and regulations, that if a player seems to be preventing himself from falling, and yep. his arm is on the floor, that would be in a natural position, and therefore can't yep. be considered as a penalty. Yep. Now, what Deva Gallagher said is that there should have been some uh, common sense um in the, this interpretation because effectively all, <laughs> all Thomas Sujek has done is thrown himself at the ball and kind of ensured that his hand hits the floor first so that's where I think it falls down in one but um yeah Demo like I said that there should be some common sense to see what has happened before the ball strikes um Suchek's arm and this is one of the things that I've I felt really angry about because the the whole point of var again uh, i'm sure everyone knows this this now is that um var is brought in to um ensure that any clear and obvious errors Mm -hmm. are brought to the referee's attention and therefore can either the, the the referee then has the ultimate decision as to what he wants to do with it now this is this is the thing that Dermot Gallagher said. He said the ref can't trigger VAR. VAR has to trigger the ref. Now, if you that's the wrong way, the wrong way around though, surely. That's that's what he said, and I, I listened to that clip three times just to make sure I've got that. In fact, in fact, no, no. no. Yeah, so don't play it because it... <laughs> yeah, we'll get copyrighted. Yeah. Um, yeah, he says the ref can't trigger VAR. VAR has to trigger the ref. So essentially what VAR will do in this instance is if he's um if the referee has hasn't blown for it, the the VAR will have a look at the decision and then will say, "Look, you've made an error here. You either need to go and have a look at it for yourself or you need to reverse the action that you've taken." Mm-hmm. Now, like I said, um Dermot Gallagher said the VAR official for this particular game may have been too focused on the law of the the incident. And then because it's not a clear and obvious error by the referee, it's then yeah. dismissed. See, there, there's a few things with this. One, it wasn't a penalty in any way, shape, or form. I don't know what, what I was talking about. No, no, in seriousness, it was a penalty. Everyone can see it was a penalty. West Ham fans were laughing because how how is that not a penalty? That was in the stadium. That wasn't that wasn't watching on TV with replays. That was in the stadium. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they were a lot further away than the ref was. So I understand in, in some senses that the VAR would trigger it for if, if the ref hasn't blown, they're going to check it. I totally don't accept that. I think the ref should be able to say, I want to go and have a look at that incident. I don't believe I, 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 it, was, it happened too quick or my vision was blocked or whatever. But in, in this instance, is this not where that VAR screen comes into play? Because the, the, the VAR is not there to make a decision as to if it's in line with 
the rules or not. What he's there is to review it and then send the on-field official over to make a decision. He shouldn't be making that decision. He should be saying, there is a handball, the, the law says it, this, uh, but go and have a look at it yourself and, and let the ref then have another look at it to, to then look at it and say, no, he flung himself at that with his arm pushing out as a goalkeeper would to save it. Or no, he just flung himself at it and he's, he's, it's struck with him as he's fallen onto the floor. I don't think the VAR should have made the decision in that case. I think it should have been an on-field review. Mm -hmm. I don't understand why it wasn't. If you'd, if you'd sent the ref over to, to do it and said, he's handballed it, and, and, and I, I think it applies to rule F7B or whatever it is, then the ref can make that decision. Now, yeah, I agree with you, or no, that's a penalty. Mm -hmm. End of. It's not, it's, it's not, there's no subjective there. And they, they've given them the, they've given them the law, they've given them the footage and said, make a decision. I don't understand what, what's, what's wrong with doing that. The fact they've gone, oh no, the law says this. So that, that must be what it was. He didn't fall over. He didn't, he wasn't on the floor laying in a natural position. He flung himself at it to make a save. See, th this, this brings me on to a point which I wanted to make a little bit later, but obviously now that you've, you've mentioned it, I think it's, it's going to be fair to, to bring this up now. So in future instances, because Dermot Gallagher has come out with some absolute waffle today, basically saying that we appreciate there's been human errors, but the, the, um, the idea of these meetings and uh, reviewing of decisions is to ensure that it doesn't happen again in the future. Now, this can either go one of two ways. So next week and and or the week after, they're going to be so shit shit hot on what is going on in terms of the um, the any calls that go to VAR. They need to be absolutely spot on. And also, I think the referees are going to be on kind of a high alert. So it wouldn't surprise me if a we see a lot more cards branded around this week by interpretations of the law. Sorry. There'd be a lot more like cynical fouls yes. given that have let, let go this season. Mm -hmm. So there, yeah, I've, I I predict an increased number of cards and um, decisions being overturned or or vice versa. But they're going to be so so on top of it over the next couple of weeks, and they've got to be. But you can then see it again falling off, and we end up in in exactly the same position here. Yeah, now, it happens with it every six weeks. Yeah. We get it. Yeah, yeah, it's... absolutely, and. Do you know it, it bothers me so much that we can't we can't hear the on field officials as to go on. So so you saying about on field officials, I have something with that. Carry on, uh, otherwise I'll forget that I had the fault. Okay. I read something that was interested. Right, so it, it bothers me. So in other sports, American football, rugby, that you can hear uh, even cricket and stuff like that, you can hear what is being discussed between the the video uh, assistant referee and the 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 match officials there's kind of like an openness and um you can hear the communications between between the two again we said this when VAR was first introduced i don't understand why the the FA have haven't gone to some of these other sports where it is working extremely well in taken a few pages out of their training books and adapted it into the premier league um <clears throat> it, it frustrates the living hell out of me that this that the premier league or the fa is so completely arrogant that they think it's going to work and it's going to work well and we have known over the last three and a half years now that it doesn't work and it is costing teams points and money Go on, on your point. So, yeah. So, so what I have read this 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 week is the Club World Cup is coming up soon. I don't know if that's this week or next week uh, between Real Madrid and probably some unknown team. I really don't know who's in it. Um, but within that, FIFA are bringing in, you know, the, the bloke who come out with the really weird speeches in the World Cup. This week, I feel like a slave and like a mushroom. And he... he this, this guy is the guy in charge, right? And at that point, we was all going, what the hell is going on? He has oh, brought yes, forward... Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. I, I, I know what you mean. The, 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 the president of FIFA. Yes, he, he's yeah, yeah. brought a motion for trials uh, for the stadium and TV to be able to hear the referees. 
not necessarily the 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 full official or the the linesman, but for the 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 actual referee to be able to make announcements that feed into that, so we can understand it. So which which is right to do. So they're trialing it at the Club World Cup, and then going to trial it a couple of other places over the next season uh, or next year, and then it will probably be bought in uh, twenty twenty five. Okay, is what they're looking at, uh, but that's that's a positive step. I don't know why it would take that long to be able to do, because it's a very simple bit of technology. It's not like it's groundbreaking. It's in every other sport. It's they've got the ability to do it now. Um, so just to implement that across, all right, at League One level or or lower, yes, you might struggle. At the Premier League level, where they've got all these technology and communication gear, there's no problem at all, and that's the same with every other top league. Mm-hmm. Um, but that will help, I think, with understanding the decisions. What it doesn't do is is give an insight into the VAR and that discussion. That's a whole different ball game, which I don't think we will ever hear. Um, but but at least the referee can go and have a look at uh, an incident on the screen and go, that's a penalty. There was a dive, or there was no contact, or it was at Yes, it, it, was, it is a foul, but it was outside the box. And everyone's got an understanding of what's going on, makes mm-hmm. everyone happy. Yeah. So that's a positive, but it's, it's not going to be quick. Uh, it's not going to be implemented quickly, unfortunately. Yeah, no. And again, I think it's it's only a a, a positive if it actually comes in. Um, because, I, I mean, I've, God knows what what's going to happen over these trial events or whatever, but they might end up just going, do you know what? It's not not worth it or um doesn't really change or impact the game or or some other crap like that but um <clears throat> yeah it's if if that does happen i think that's really good but i still think they should go one further because like i said in other sports you get to let you get to hear the conversations between the video referees and the on match officials uh the on pitch officials um which again i don't understand why why they can't do it and just to come back to a point which you have said over the last few weeks, and I've I've kind of laughed under my breath <laughs> every time you've said it, but <laughs> the further and further we get into this, I completely agree with you. It's a fix. There is some some sort of conspiracy going on to here. Yeah. Um, it's you can't you can't deny it any longer. If I'm being completely no. honest. And and the, the fact that they're saying, oh, yeah, this, that, and the other, and that's how VAR should be using, and VAR should be used as a tool to make decisions better. It shouldn't, it, like the two minutes to do offsides, if it's taking two minutes, it's not offside. It's, it, it's all right, it may be marginal, but it's not offside. The the bit that, that gets me with it is it, there's always an excuse. For the first time ever, I think they said, oh, human error. And yes, there is a there is a uh, an element of that, but why is it? It's been in for four seasons yet. This is the first instance of human error, mm-hmm. and in four cases yet. When you look back for the last four years, there's been an abundance of human error. It's not it's not error at all. It's just incompetence. There's yep. a, there's a difference. There's not someone who's doing their job really well, and, and actually they're just had a bad day. This is week after week. Um, the one thing that your mate has said, Mr. Gallagher, um, wound me up. And this is about the, the, the offside that was they didn't take into it or didn't do anything with and didn't draw the lines. And he said this. Uh, let me, sorry, let me just is this it. Is this for the Arsenal game? This is the Arsenal game. Yeah, so okay, so the first thing he said was, if the referee thinks he's had a materialistic impact on the player, they can be offside. The rules don't say they can be offside. I'm, I'm not being funny. When we cast it, cast your mind back, what, three, four weeks, that Marcus Rashford incident where he swung and missed the ball, that's a material in, materialistic impact on the on the goalkeeper, is it not? Because he thinks he's going to kick the ball. Mm-hmm. But So so that, that then leaves it open to, well, the offside rule, which someone found an article and posted again the other day where they cleared up with VAR that that should have been offside from a year ago. Um, so they're, 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 they're tripping themselves up. But um, is, is that saying that, that it can be, it's not it's not a black and white rule, it can be changed to fit the need? It, just, it, it, stink, it does stink of, it's for fix, and we're trying to come up with excuses as to, oh, we're really sorry, we got it wrong again. 
And uh, just talking about the uh, the Arsenal goal, this is um, uh, this is something that I've I've obviously made a, a few notes on being the um, being the Arsenal fan of the, of the bunch. But um, one of the things that uh, Denver Gallagher says is that um, it's there could have been the interpretation from from Lee Mason saying I've basically taken three minutes and I haven't found an offence. Um, he then doesn't uh, check the offside. And this is where the, the, the error has occurred. Now, there's not only one offside in, in that particular build-up. There's two. Uh, obviously, the, from what the incident we, which you're saying is the the first when the, I think it's the free kick comes in. Um, yeah. that's, that's the first instance of offside. They then haven't checked the second incident, which um, I think it was Nopper, I think. Uh, Norgard. Norgard, thank you. Flick the um or headed the ball across or flick the ball across for Ivan Tony to head the ball in. Now, the this is not the first time as well that this um this official has been done for it. Uh Lee Mason, he said um he's previously been suspended for an incorrect decision um for Newcastle, I want to say, earlier on in the season. So he was suspended after the match. Um I mean, is it- the VAR assistant, or is this the on-field official? Sorry, this is the VAR assistant. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Lee Mason, he retired from refereeing last year to to do VAR full time, and he yeah. has already been suspended for one match, or relieved of one match duty earlier on in the season for um, it was the incident where Joe Willock clashed with the goalkeeper. Oh yes, okay, yeah, I remember. So that he was suspended after that match. Um, yeah. Sack now, him. sorry, sack him. Right, this is the bit I'm coming on to. So, um, when when I was watching when I was watching Ref Watch, Kevin Campbell, obviously ex Arsenal player, but he but played for some other teams as well. Um, I think including Portsmouth or or someone. But anyway, um, he said, um, and I think this is a brilliant statement. He said it's one of two things. Um, so. <clears throat> Sorry. Firstly, he said that this is this is so unbelievably unprofessional. He said at the end of the day, these are costing teams points. So it's either mm. he said if if Arsenal lose the title now by two points because of a an I'm sorry I made an error decision, there's going to be an outroar. And likewise with with Brighton if they miss out on Champions League places because that's another incident I'll come on to very quickly. Um, but for any other team that have had issues, so Everton. Um, with the goal that was disallowed against Liverpool, um, that that was another decision that, that has been done wrong. Um, so yes, what he said is that it's either two things: one, it was either deliberate that he hasn't drawn the lines on, and therefore should be sacked. If he has missed it, if he's genuinely missed it, again that means he's not proficient in his job, and therefore should be sacked. Because I can understand from a first incidence or a first incident, and he has made a mistake, and if he's got an unblemished record, then you can allow him that one. In fact, you could forgive him. You could forgive him. Yeah. But because it's not the first time, um, it is, I think, further training is is bullshit. If, if If you can't do it at this standard, and if you can't do it proficient proficiently, then you need to be got rid of because at the end of the day, there's millions of pounds at, at, at stake for for positions, for trophies, the yeah. lot. So he, here's the thing: that first one, he was looking for the block, wasn't he? Mm-hmm. Well, it, it wasn't a block. If anything, Gabriel's got hold of his shirt, so that's a foul. So he's missed that one. Uh, the block, I wouldn't have said it was blocked. They're they're both tussling, so is what it is. But that. Ivan Tony was offside and Norgard was offside. So that's three things he's missed looking for one thing. What I would be interested to see is if the Premier League have any integrity and want to prove that there's no corruption in the in their game, would be to sack him and look into what what money is coming from him, what bets have been put on by his friends and family and people he knows on that game. Because any of them means that actually if they won money on it, and it's gonna, it's not all right. It's not gonna be a like a two pound bet, is it? It's gonna be a big bet. It's gonna be, it's gonna be fifty pound or more. Mm-hmm. Then that's corruption. He's fixed the game, which is which is an imprisonable, imprisonable offence. 
Yeah, and, and it, it, sorry, go on. It's, I was going to say, it's just, if, if they had the integrity to say it's wrong, it's clearly wrong, we don't know why that's gone wrong. He's got no explanation as to why he's missed all of these things. Actually, that's the next step, isn't it, to look into it? Because as you said, it's not the first time, and it looks deliberate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can't you can't have an an oops in the in these in these instances. Um, so just moving on very quickly, I just mentioned it um, about the the Brighton goal uh, being disallowed. Again, the <clears throat> for the the issue that they had with this one is that the lines were drawn incorrectly, and therefore the goal was uh, incorrectly chalked off. Now, again, Howard Webb has come out and said I've. Uh, I've contacted both Brighton and Arsenal and apologised for these the, these errors. Um, and I just want to go back to something that you've mentioned um, just very quickly earlier about how on the balance of play, the season sh- should even itself out. I don't think we should be in this position where oh. it, stuff shouldn't have to even itself out no, or it, that it ever will even itself out. No, oh, and, 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 and say, I think the incident at Chelsea and at West Ham is is just pure coincidence. I don't think there's any rhyme or reason to it. And if there is, then that, again, that's a form of match fixing. We got it wrong in that one, so we've got to let it go in that one. That's still match fixing. It's it, the, the the fact that, again, like it's, it's a ridiculous thing to do. It's not even like it was obvious when he drew the lines. It's not even like it's a case that no one else could see it. Um, I, I think you're right. The fact that we're even in this position is laughable. And to to say it's the best league in the world, it's not. It can't be because hmm. the official is dog shit. <laughs> yeah. you, you can't you can't claim to be the best at something if you're if actually we've got the best players, the best stadiums, the best fans. But, but actually our officials are so bad that it looks like it's match fix every week. That means you're the worst. Hmm. You can have... Every league's got good fans. Every league will like their stadiums. All right, everyone wants a bigger stadium, newer, newer stadium. We've got more money than most most leagues. That's that's certainly a, a number one. We've got the most money. We've got the most corruption in, in our owners. We've got the most wrongdoing in financials. We've got... Do you know what I mean? It, where where do you where do you draw the line? Who's making that assumption apart from Sky Sports selling it? Yeah, it's it's not. Yeah. I'm sorry, it's, it's just not. But yeah, I just the the it gets you down a little bit, doesn't it? It does Cause, it, it, immensely because uh, obviously we could have gone eight points clear at the t- the top of the league again. And now obviously I know if, just before anyone jumps on my back and says what well, we I don't know what would have happened in the last 20 minutes or so from, from when the goal was scored. And you're right. You you won't know what, what happened or what would have happened because at that particular point, Brentford were in, in the game anyway. I mean, we started coming back into it towards the end of the match and trying to get the winner. But um, <clears throat> so anything could have happened if the goal was chalked off that you're right. Brent, Brentford could have come and scored another goal or potentially scored two um, on the, on the balance of play. So, it's it is so frustrating because we will never know and we will never and like I said if we miss out on the title from from a couple of the confirmed VAR decisions um, that have been told that they've got wrong um, which could have impacted the game for whatever reason either a goal going against us or a goal going for us being chalked off or whatever um, it's it, you wonder why some of these teams want to form this bloody Super League or whatever Um which uh, again has, has reared its ugly head from what, what I've seen over the last couple of days. But I suppose two positive things from from uh, this um, this investigation, which is going on. So as you mentioned, obviously how Webb has called the um, the investigation for match officials on Tuesday, so tomorrow. Um, I'll be interested to see if anything comes from that, um, i.e., sackings or suspensions. But um, another thing that has come to light is that the the VAR official for tonight's game against Everton and against the Manchester City game, this guy called John Brooks, was the uh, the VAR assistant. He was um, the the guy that was uh, on duty against Brighton. Obviously, got the uh, the decision wrong. He's been pulled or replaced from tonight's game against Everton and also the Manchester City game. Um, again, I would be interested to know what. Previous incidents that have been confirmed as wrong are down to him. Um, 
and again with this whole kind of retraining aspect it's it's crap these people are ex officials um ex match officials if they can't do the job they shouldn't be doing the job yep. again when there's such high stakes for for such a competitive supposedly competitive league um this like i said one error you you should be uh, should be forgiven but at this level if you got more than two errors or two blemishes to record then it's um it should be uh, should be you should be dismissed <clears throat> and it does lead me on to my next question is obviously where do we go from here or do you think it's very much going to depend on the conversations that are had tomorrow do we do we scrap var do we just sack those individuals or, or do we amend do we amend the rules so there's no ambiguity? I don't think there is it. I don't think there is any ambiguity in the rules. I really don't. Uh, I think you you can apply. People can apply them and go, "Oh, this is how I want to apply these rules." But I don't think that they're they're not written to be grey, are they? They're they're written to be very straightforward. This is this is wrong. This is right. I don't think we'll ever get rid of VAR, unfortunately. Um, Although there was less controversy and less mistakes when it wasn't here, there were still mistakes and there was human error. Nasha mind back Liverpool West Ham that Adam Lallana goal that he was six foot offside for, but but they were few and far between. They weren't four a week every mm-hmm. week. Um, I think you have to get rid of the entire stuff. They have to be bold enough to do that. We we're getting rid of everybody. And that's on field as well. That's not just VAR officials. That's that's the on field officials. There's a few big names in there that are awful. They're awful at, at making decisions. They're awful at running the game. Because at, at, at what point do they not go? Show me the incident. You've made a mistake. Okay, show me. What have, what have I missed? Do you know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. not only I, I would respect that if if, if that was the case. Um, and they're learning on the go. Oh yeah, I did miss that. My 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 bad. Let's let's correct it with what needs to happen. But the, just to go, little bird in your ear, knowing how many mistakes they make regularly and how often they're now giving apologies out to clubs to go. Okay, yeah, I've made that mistake. I'm going to trust your judgment and and go with what you say. That that's someone who who's got no integrity in their job. Doesn't really know what they're meant to be doing. Because they should be saying, that's fine, show me what I've got wrong so I can correct it. Mm-hmm. But they don't do that. And I just think the whole way it's implemented over here is wrong. They've brought in Howard Webb halfway for a season. He's not been in the job long, if I'm correct in that statement. I think it's since the World Cup he's come in properly. Mm-hmm. But they need to be big enough to make big changes, to say, we're not having it. This is not good enough. This is not the standard we expect won't do it they'll go we've had a really productive meeting we've learned from our mistakes and we'll do our best same as they do every time but it just it stinks of money 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 mm. and the, i mean this is this is the reason why the guy who's now the head of fifa wants to bring in people being able to hear the ref to try and make it more transparent because it make if, if you've got to portray your decision to a stadium full of people and clearly it's a corrupt decision that's going to make it a lot harder to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, won't rule it out completely, but it'll make it harder to do. So he's trying from the top to to bring in these things. And why does it take so long? Because there is a lot of corruption in football. We know there is. It's been proven. So people put blockades. We need to do so many trials. We need to do this and a report. and a... They just put it in place. Put it in place. What, what harm is it going to bring to the game, being transparent with it? None. Um, apart from the players are going to start swearing at you as a ref and you're going to have to book them. It will take six weeks to sort out completely across the globe. Mm-hmm. I don't understand what the problem is. But yeah, I, I just think we're going to be stuck with it as it is forever until such point it starts affecting someone's pocket. Yep. Yeah, I've, I, do you know what? As, as sad as it is to say, I think I, 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 do, I do agree with everything you said. Um it's, it is immensely frustrating. And I, I can remember when we first started having these conversations on this very channel um, about the, the issues surrounding VAR. Um, and to be honest, it feels it feels like, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure if this is just because of the, the emotion, because I know we've been impacted just recently by it. Um, but it just feels like nothing's improved. 
or is it's got or it's got worse there doesn't seem to be any improvement um I'd, i would say for a good spell of the beginning of last year i think was probably the best it's ever run um and i remember i actually remember going through some episodes with you where the, the the subject of var didn't come up um which w- was nice um but it's, it seems to be on a weekly basis now that there, there, there's some controversy about it and i think I, i'm just interested to see what comes out of these conversations tomorrow just to see how um how how transparent they are going to be about the sorts of conversations that they've they've had in between um, I would be very interested to see if any discussions are made between the Premier League managers um, <clears throat> to to say what what changes have been implemented, what they're going to do about it. I mean, I mean, th- there should even be an appeal process, but the the, the referees association or the PGMOL is is such a protected um, industry if you like, as it stands at the moment, you can't make managers can't say anything without being, um, getting fines or anything like that. Um, players can't say anything for, without getting fines. Um, I mean, a couple of weeks ago, we saw these, um, these in- issues for, for Arsenal being, um, reprimanded by the FA for, um, a failure to to control their players from players running up to the referee because of handballs that haven't been given against us and all this sort of stuff. I haven't seen one incident since. We've got charged twice. And I haven't seen any other team. There's been so many screenshots and stuff sent on social media of other teams surrounding the referees and not one fucking thing has been said about that and that's another thing that pisses me off i think maybe one of the only things that would change it and not that i condone it is is it would fit two agendas right we want to get rid of VAR. just stop oil want some attention so why don't they go and glue themselves to referees and var <laughs> they'd get the attention we'll get rid of the referees and var everyone's happy yes i don't again i don't condone people doing that it's a stupid thing to do but at least at that point <laughs> <clears throat> we need to think about this. Hmm. Do you know what I mean? It just it, it gets to that ridiculous level where that's the sort of thing that would have to happen before there is a they even review it. Yeah. So anyway, I think we've done um, we've done the VAR for a journey to death um, on this this particular episode. Obviously, if you want to have your say, please um, leave your comments in the um, the section uh, the comment section below. Uh, let us know what you think. The the what what should be done to 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 make the game better what do you think should happen in the immediate future um because the way it's running at the moment isn't isn't working and it's immensely frustrating for i think everyone um <clears throat> unless you live Arpel. um actually ian uh, just whilst we're on this basis the the game as it stands at the moment is 32 minutes into uh, into the game are you able to give us a, a quick score update at all if- Nil, nil nil perfect uh Liverpool had the better of the chances uh just the guy guys just pulled down from a corner uh gone for the spectacular and it's high and wide and not very handsome um yeah perfect so, nil nil come on you blues um <clears throat> yes so um as I said, we've done the VAR bit to death now. Um, leave your comments in the uh, comment section below. Um, every week we do uh, a set of predictions for the coveted FIFA Day Trophy uh, predictions trophy, which you can see uh, currently sitting over Ian's left shoulder, I believe, in the little cubby. Um, Ian is the current holder of that, uh, and I am making a challenge to uh, to get that back for next season. Um, so every week we make some predictions, uh, obviously for our respective teams and any other standout fixtures. Uh, we did three games last week. Uh, West Ham versus Chelsea, Arsenal versus Brentford, and then Liverpool versus Everton for the Merseyside derby. That game is currently ongoing as we speak. Um, but just a recap on last week's prediction. So, Ian, uh, for West Ham and Chelsea, you had Chelsea to win 2-1. I had 1-1. Uh, as we know, the score was 1-1, so that's zero points to you, three points to me. Sorry, do you want me to recap that? Yeah, no, no. <laughs> you got points, I didn't. Yeah, I get it, I, I get it, too. <laughs> They should have won, though. They should have won. If they are, they would have won. 
Uh, Arsenal versus Brentford. Uh, you had 2-2. I had 2-1. The score was 2-1-2. One point to you, zero points to me. And obviously the Liverpool-Everton game is ongoing as we speak. Um, so we'll come back to that one next week. Um, but the... Sorry? What did I say for the Everton? Uh, you said Everton to win 1-0 and I had Everton to win 2-1. Um, so the points as it stands for this week in, uh, I've got three and you have got one. So the season totals so far, based just based on as we are now, uh, Ian, you're on 35 and I am now on 43. So he's opened up an eight point gap with the results pending for tonight, baby. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so we have three games, uh, again this week. So Arsenal versus Manchester City on Wednesday, uh, Aston Villa versus Arsenal on the Saturday and Spurs versus West Ham on the Sunday. So I will start with the Manchester City game. Um, <clears throat> firstly, Erling Haaland's um, been injured. I uh, don't know whether he's going to be available for the game on Wednesday or not. Um, there's part of me that's hoping for not, not for the fact that he's injured, but hoping just for the fact that he's not fit enough to play. Um, <clears throat> when we played in the FA Cup against Manchester City a few weeks ago, Granted, we'd lost the game 1-0, but we'd made six changes to the the side. And I think we were the better team over the course of the game anyway, um, even with the, the weakened side, or the rotated side, should I say. Um, I think it's going to be a very different game this time. We are playing at home. Um, and obviously, we are on the back of a few disappointing results now. So, loss against Manchester City, loss against Everton, and a draw against Brentford, albeit should have been uh, a win. Um, so I am going to be very positive. I don't think we'll keep a clean sheet, regardless of whether Haaland's playing or not. Um, but I mean, Gabriel and um, Saliba, I think will do the number on Haaland if he is playing. So I am going to go for 2-1 to Arsenal on this one. Oh, interesting. I'm going 2-0 Man City. No, 2-1 Man City, sorry. Okay. It was short and sweet there. <laughs> Lovely stuff. And then on the Saturday's game, Aston Villa versus Arsenal. So again, Unai Emery uh, at the helm is um, taking on his old team, Arsenal. Um, <clears throat> I I don't know where to sit on this one. Again, I think Unai Emery is going to be very defensive against us. He knows kind of how we play, although the, the philosophy and the mentality has changed a lot since he was last at the helm of Arsenal. Um <clears throat> But it does seem to always get the better of us, obviously, in the Europa League uh, final uh, a couple of seasons ago. Um, again, I th t to be honest, I think it depends on how the game goes against uh, Man City. I think if we win, it might end up being a draw. So I'm going to go for... Uh, do you know what? I'm going to go for 2-2 two -two on that one. <clears throat> I think, it's as you said, Emery will want to win. Um Aston Villa have been playing better football, I would say, than they did under Gerrard, but they're not winning games. Um, the only bonus they do have is you're playing Manchester City during a week. So for them, it's playing potentially a tired side, or more tired side, I should say. Uh, I don't think they're going to have enough, though. I think that's going to be an Arsenal win, and it's going to be 1-0. And then just finally, the uh, the big match on Sunday, uh, London Derby again, Tottenham Hotspur versus West Ham United. Yeah, so obviously uh, we're, where are we, where You're is away. it, Tottenham? Mm -hmm. So difficult place to play, but on the bonus side, Tottenham are not playing well and the, the fans will start getting on Conte's back, I think, um, especially if we can keep ourselves in it. We have turned around their performances, I think, in the last four or five weeks and still so pardon me still not great but not terrible um, it's one usually a form goes out the window but we haven't really got any form so that doesn't affect us this time around um, I'm going to go for a 2-1 West Ham win I think we're going to come from behind and we're going to take three points okay um Do you know what? As, as much as it pains me to say this, you think Tottenham are going to win, don't you? I. Do you know? It's 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 annoying because I think for for some of the bigger games they've done really well uh, for themselves. Obviously against. Sorry, go on. 
There is a score update. What a counter-attack. Sensational pace from Nunes down the left to expose Everton, who are up the pitch. He spots Salah and Gakpo in the middle. Clips over a clever ball to them. Pickford is absolutely nowhere. So Salah has the easy task of prodding home the ball. 1-0 Liverpool. God damn it. Come on, you please. Um, <clears throat> yes. Um, I I do. I, I think... No. I'm going to go for a 1-1 draw, I think, on this one. Um... Again, uh, as I said, Spurs have been so inconsistent this season. Um, but again, it wouldn't surprise me if we, we see a Harry Kane masterclass. But um, I, I just don't think I don't think they've got him. They've got it in them. Obviously, you've mentioned the injuries as well. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll stick with my decision. Actually, I'll go for a 1-1. One, one. So those are our predictions. Let us know your predictions in the comments section below. Um, if you are new to this channel, uh, thank you very much for sticking with us um, up until this point. If you have made it this far, um, if you have enjoyed what you've uh, what you've seen and you want to see more, please hit that like and subscribe button and tune on the notification bell. We are here every week um, making our predictions and talking absolute drivel uh, for the most part. But if you have enjoyed it, um, thank you very much for sticking with us. Um, Ian, have you got anything else you want to uh, to mention for today's episode? Just quickly, um, Neil Warnock's back in management, which is good. Uh, so Leeds look like they've got rid of their manager and he's going in to replace um, Nathan Jones at Southampton. And the Premier League have already rescinded six of the charges against Manchester City because they were errors. They shouldn't have been included. I think it's all going to be dropped sooner rather than later, don't you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Jokes. How can you get a four years worth of investigation and go, oh, sorry, there's six errors in it? <laughs> oh, human human it. error. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> you an apology next, I'd imagine. But yeah, just, just, just again, stinks of, of incompetency from top to bottom, doesn't it? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah, if, again, if there's anything else you want to comment on, please hit the. Um, Please leave a comment down in the uh, the comment section. We will do our best to get back to you. Um, obviously, we're inundated with comments on a weekly basis. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> until next week, I think we'll wrap it up there. Uh, until next week, I've been Mike. I've been Ian. And we'll see you next week. Bye.